Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we're on bag E of the Tamiya Grand Hauler. Looks like we're fitting a large amount of chrome along with the wheels and tyres. Off we go then, step 27. For this we need four M3x15s and the two H4 wheel arches. They end up with some little nubs from where they were cut from the parts tree, but I'll deal with them when we get the body ready for its paint. The mounts on the arches have some little pins that neatly line up with holes in the chassis. All we need to do is locate them and install the screw at each end. Couldn't be easier. The interesting bit though, the manual says if we're using the motorised trailer legs, which we probably will, we shouldn't fit the arches. Now I should think it will probably be a clearance issue, but it does sound like Tamiya had to compromise a bit. Only the four screws on this step, so it didn't take us long at all. Step 28, wheels and tyres. We need 12 M2 by 5s and 12 M2 nuts. The wheels, which need to be cut free from the sprues. Don't forget to cut the remaining nubs off too. They're usually a bit sharp and can cause some minor leakage if you catch a finger on them while trying to fit the tyres. The rears are dualies, so each sprue has an inner and an outer wheel that neatly slot together. The tyres don't have any foam inserts, but the rubber is pretty stiff. Pick a side to go on the outside, usually the cleanest or the side with print moulded in. It's up to you. Pull the tyre onto a wheel and work it until the bead is nicely seated all the way around. The manual also wants us to glue the tyres, which would probably be a good idea, but for now I want the option of taking them off. For the first test run they will more than likely hold up just fine. The outside wheel with the three little pins wants to be pressed into the inside wheel. There's two sets of holes, three plain and three with hex holes for the nuts. The pins want to line up with the plain ones. To hold them all together we need to use one of the M2 screws, feed it through the holes on the outside of the wheel. From the inside we need a little bit of thread lock on the threads. As usual we want to be careful not to get any on the plastic. Next is a nut. We only want to do them up just enough to take up the slack for now. When all three screws and nuts go in, we can go round and tighten them all up fully. So, there we go, there's one dually. Just repeat another three times to make a set. And don't forget to fit the front wheels with tyres too. Very nice. There's nothing quite like the smell of freshly opened tyres. So many memories. Step 29. Fitting the wheels. This time we need four splined drive hexes six wheel nuts and four 1150 bushes, but we're going to be replacing them with bearings. At the rear we want to use the hexes. They only fit one way round. We need the side with the recesses facing outwards. Follow that with a wheel and then a nut. We can do them up all the way. The nut and the wheel press up against the large e-clip, so we don't need to be too careful about binding up the bearings. Repeat with the other three and we've got the rear wheels on. The front wheels are just like the ones on a rear wheel drive buggy. The bearings fit inside the wheel. This keeps the hubs nice and small, which is ideal for a scale axle. Press the bearings in, keeping them nice and straight. Pop the wheel over the axle and follow it with a nut. This being nicely designed, the length of the shoulder on the axle means we can just do up the nut until it stops without having to worry about the clearance. Very nice. Same on the other side, which leaves us with a rolling chassis. Step 30, and I think we might have a new contender for the shortest step. We need two 8mm self-tappers, an S9 and an S5, one of the chrome side boxes and its bottom plate. And that's it. The box would house the control board if we were fitting an MFC, but we're not. Optionally, they have you fit the ESC switch instead, but the ESC we're going to end up with doesn't have a switch that's going to fit. Which means all we need to do is pop the bottom plate on the bottom of the box and install the two self-tappers. Tamiya also use a couple of bits of double-sided tape, but I think we'll probably get away without. And there we go then, that was fun. Step 31, more shiny bits. We need four M3x6s, eight 22mm self-tappers and two 8mm self-tappers. For plastics we need two S4 and S11 sets another S5 and S9 to make another box, and an F10 and an F13 to mount it to the chassis. First we have these cylinders, I guess they would probably be for compressed air or perhaps oil, not sure. The manual wants us to glue the two halves together, but for the initial dry build the screws are going to hold it in position just fine. They'll get glued up at the painting stage later. They'll fit on the top of the box in several different positions, so we need to check with the diagram to get them right. 
On the left we want to fit F10 with the two long self-tappers, and on the right we want to use F13. Do the screws up nice and snug. They can get a bit tight, so be really careful not to slip and scratch the chrome. Next we need to make up the other box, which is just like the first one. The bottom plate goes on and gets fixed with the two short self-tappers. The tank goes on the top, checking with the diagram so we get it the right way around. This time though the mounts are already fitted to the chassis. Still seems a bit odd that Tamiya decided to break it up like that. It does make it a little bit awkward to fit because the long self-tappers need a bit of force to do up, so we could easily damage the little mounts. To be safe we need to use a block under the box so we've got something to press against. On the other side things are much easier. The box offers up to the chassis where we install the M3 screws. But they are going to need a little bit of thread lock, and to make sure we don't get any on the plastic we need access to the underside. Well, that means removing the gearbox. It's only four screws, but I can't help thinking a different build order might work out better. From the bottom there's two more screws to install, then all the ends of the screws need a little smear of thread lock before being unscrewed and retightened to spread it all out. It's a little bit of a faff, but it's better than losing the screws. That just leaves refitting the gearbox and its prop shaft, which at this stage is quite a simple task. OK, step 32, and it looks like we're building the fuel tanks. We need one M3 by 12, four 8mm self-tappers, one M3 plain nut, one M2 plain nut, a washer, a small brass ball end, and what Tamiya call a small round bushing, but I think I would probably call that a top hat bushing. For plastics we've got D2, the coupling release mounting plate, G4, the release arm, then we've got two R1s and R2s, the fuel tanks, and four R3s, the end caps. Tamiya also has us use the R8s, which are fuel tank filler caps, but I'm going to leave those until the painting's done. For the tanks we need an R1 and an R2. They fit together quite nicely and use two of the self-tappers in the holes in the bottom to stay together. Just like the cylinders, Tamiya wants us to glue it all together, but I'm going to wait until it's time to do the painting. Next the end caps go on. There's no clever clips, they just loosely rest in place, so they will need some glue. Build up the two tanks, and for now I'm just going to use a little bit of Yoohoo to keep the caps on. It will do the job well enough, but we'll still be able to pull them off later when we do the painting. They will probably need a rubber band around them so the caps don't fall off while it all dries. The release lever next. We need to install the ball end and M2 nut in the hole about a third of the way from the end. The nut goes into the hex shaped hole and the ball end on the smooth side. Make sure the ball end is nicely done up. For the big hole we'll be needing the M3 screw with the washer under its head ready to fit. The top hat bushing inserts from the underside of the lever, the side with the nut. And then the screw and washer drop in from the top. Next the M3 nut fits in the hex shaped hole in the bottom of the mounting plate and the lever just fits on the top. Do up the screw nice and tight. So now we have the tanks and release lever ready to fit, we can move on to step 33. OK, for this one we need four M3x15s and six M3x6s, along with the tanks, the release lever, and of course the chassis. Right, lever plate first. There's a few pairs of holes in the chassis it'll fit, so make sure you get the right ones. We want the holes that are just in front of the rear arches, and out of the two sets we want the ones nearest the front. Sit the plate on the chassis and install the two M3x6s. These should really get some thread lock, but I'll most likely end up with a servo release on the coupling. With any luck the screws won't back out in the meantime. The fuel tanks only have one set of holes they'll line up on, so that's easy. Just install the remaining M3x6s. Carefully flip the chassis over without stressing the fuel tank mountings and install the M3x15s in the bottom holes. These screws should really get some thread lock too, but just like the canisters and boxes they're going to need to come off again for paint, so we'll thread lock them then. And that's about it for this week. Nothing too exciting this time, all fairly basic stuff, but it all goes towards the greater goal, so it has to be done. Next week I think we get more chrome, and the coupling, which should be fun to put together. So, thanks for watching, like if you liked, by all means subscribe if you fancy it, and of course leave a comment if you've got something to say. Bye guys! <music>